one Sunday evening. Yeah, but that's right. Yeah, I think it's early. Once a while, I'll say so. So. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
We ask you, Father, that you would forgive us for our sins and death save us. For this prayer we'd ask in Jesus' name, amen. Sing number 155, the old rugged cross, to prepare our minds for the Lord's Supper. <clears throat> On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dearest stand back. Till my trophies at 
blast I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. We gather, we gather around this table this morning to remember the sacrifice that Christ made for us. That he came and lived a perfect life. He didn't deserve death. He lived a perfect life. And yet was willing to sacrifice himself in our stead. So if we live our lives for him, we live our lives right, the way the Bible says, that we have a hope of eternity with him in heaven. You know, that's... that's someday I get to see Christ. If I live my life right and be all thanking personally, you know, on a one, we can do that now through prayer to a certain extent, but to be able to see him and thank him for the sacrifice that he made. We wouldn't have that hope if it wasn't for his willingness and God's willingness to send him to die in our stead. I please ask you to think about these things as we partake. Please. Bow with me for prayer for the bread. Dear Heavenly Father, we, we thank you for your willingness to, to send your son and, and his willingness to come and, and to, to die in our stead, to die in our place, that we could have a hope of eternity. We ask you to be with us as, as we partake of this bread and throughout our lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. Please bow with me again. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you now asking your blessing upon this fruit of the vine that represents the blood that your son shed, that we could have a hope of eternity. We ask that you, again, that you bless it and that you be with us as we partake. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I would remind you also that we do have the, the, the tray, tray for contribution is on the table in the back. And, and uh, if you haven't taken advantage of that, to please, please do so. Sing number 104, Ferris Lord Jesus. <clears throat> Ferris Lord Jesus, ruler of all nature, Jesus. 
shines brighter, Jesus shines purer than all the angels have can boast. Now, if you're not hindered and you would like to, Stand with me as we sing number one, Our God, He is Alive. I think I may have knocked you off by trying to advance it myself, so I'll try and keep up with it. All right. There is beyond the azure blue A God concealed from human sight He tinted skies with heavenly hue and frame the worlds with his great might. There is a God, he is alive. In him we live and we survive. From the star God created man, he is our God. prophets heard. He is the God that we should know, who speaks from his inspired word. There is a God, he is alive, in him we live and we survive. From the star in his hand though men may search they cannot find for God alone does understand there is a God he is alive in him we live and we survive from the star God created man might set man free and evermore with him could live there is a God he is alive in him we live and we survive from the star God created man he is our God the It is good to see you. I think there's uh, just enough people here I could count you all on my hands and toes, uh, but that is good to see you. There are those who are not able to be here with us physically this morning, but I do know they are watching this at home, uh, and so we are thankful for them. It's good for us to be able to come here, be able to hear the prayers uh, that have been mentioned so far, be mentioned at the end of the lesson and then of the singing, being able to hear everyone's voice. What a wonderful time. A few things before we get to today's lesson. The first thing is about the phone call. Again, that's for us here in person, or if you're watching this on the live stream. I want to make you aware of tonight's phone call. If you have a bulletin, it's on the back. It should give you the phone number and the verse. 
Tonight we'll be looking at James chapter 1, 19 through 27. So again, if you're not here, if you don't have a bulletin, the verse is James chapter 1, verses 19 through 27. We're going to be spending the next couple of weeks, and the plan is uh, next Sunday evening when Han and I will just be getting back home from Indiana that Dave will be teaching that, and he'll move on, I believe, to chapter 2 of James. So we'll still be on that same thought process and advancing through the book of James. So I wanted to make you aware of that. And then this morning, I got to be a part of the adult class, got to listen to the video that was being shared this morning, and it's about the miracles where Jesus had performed those miracles. And I thought something um, great was said, and I think it's for a reminder, and for those who didn't hear this morning's uh, Bible study, I want to share this thought with you, and I believe it ties in with the lesson this morning very well. But they brought up about the miracles of Jesus, and they talked about in John 9, where Jesus heals a blind man. But the very start, the very beginning of chapter 9, it says this, Now as Jesus passed by, he saw a man who was blind from birth, and his disciples asked him, saying, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he has been born blind? And this is Jesus' response, verse 3. Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned, but that the works of God should be revealed in him. And what they talked about then in that uh, study and bringing that up is that sometimes innocent people suffer. Yes, there is justice and those who are found guilty are punished and they are having to suffer for it, but sometimes good people also suffer. And so when we think about the guilty stuff, and if we think about children for a moment, then perhaps we can think about today's lesson, being a time out. You see that child there, he's facing the wall. Perhaps you yourself have been a child that's been in time out. Perhaps you're someone who's given someone a time out, whether you're a child, a grandchild. You make them stand and face a wall, face a corner. You send them to their room, but you put them in time out. It's a form of punishment, it's a form, it's a form of correcting them, disciplining them. It gives them time to think about their actions. There's a purpose behind the timeout. Even if you think about it in sporting events, they sometimes call a time out. They do it for the benefit of the team. They do it so they don't make a mistake and lose. There's a hope that they can change something and have the victory. And so today we want to look at an example of someone in the Bible who perhaps was in a sort of time out. He was given time to think about his actions. We're going to talk this morning about Jonah. That's where we're going to be at for our three points this morning if you want to turn to the book of Jonah. And as you're turning there, I want to share this with you. It's a quote that you can put into your child's room, perhaps the wall that they would face in their moments of being in a timeout, but it says this, Time out to think about the things you do, but always remember, I love you. Again, there's a purpose, there's a reason for the time out. The time out is for that child, for the individual in the time out, to think about what they've done, to think about their actions, consequences for those actions. And hopefully that they would change their behavior, they would change their actions, and know that I've done this because I love you. Know that God chastens us, He corrects us because He loves us. And so again, some of us, you think about this year, 2020, of it being a sort of a time out, a time for you and I to think, a time for us to evaluate our lives, and if we've been faithful. Some of us may just be innocent bystanders who are going through this, but hopefully it still gives us an opportunity to think. Think about our actions. How is it that we can be more faithful coming out of this? And so that leads us to the points this morning. The points this morning is we're going to see that Jonah disobeyed God. There are many people who disobey God. There are people, again, children who disobey their parents, and so they're given time to think about their actions. They're put into a time out. We'll see that with Jonah. And then the hope for you as a parent, as a grandparent, you as the person disciplining them, the hope is that there is change. 
And we'll see that perhaps at first there was a change for Jonah, but truly in his heart he never changed, and how sad that is. But that you and I would rise above that and not be like Jonah, but truly when we're given the time to think about our actions and how it is we can be more faithful, how it is we can evangelize better, that we would take advantage of that time and truly use it to our betterment. So, the first verse we want to look at this morning is found in Jonah chapter 1, verse 3. Jonah chapter 1, verse 3. To see about Jonah disobeying God. Many of you may know this account. If you were to read the book of Jonah, it's only four chapters. Very short. But in each of those chapters, probably enough material to do four different lessons. To do four whole lessons, if not more on this very short book of Jonah. But Jonah chapter 1, verse 3, it tells us this, But Jonah arose to flee to Tarshish. From the presence of the Lord, he went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare and went down into it to go with them to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. So we perhaps think of that when we hear about the account of Noah, when we read the account of Noah, we think his disobedience is when he leaves the land and he goes and steps out onto the water, when he goes to step out onto the boat, that he has now somehow officially disobeyed God. But if you remember, we've studied, we've looked at the book of Jonah, we looked at his homeland, uh, where he perhaps would have resided normally when he wasn't traveling for work. And for his home place to Joppa would have been about a hundred miles. A hundred miles on land that Jonah, had he been home, would have traveled to leave, to flee from God. As it says, from the presence of the Lord. Imagine what kind of heart, imagine what kind of uh, thought process Jonah had to have that every mile where he could have turned back and he said, Well, you know, I, I'm a servant of God. I'm a worker of God. I should be doing what he wants me to do. He had a lot of time to think before he ever stepped foot on the boat, and yet Jonah kept getting further and further from God's plan. With each mile closer to Joppa, he was further, a mile further, from God's plan. I believe it's in 2 Kings where there is a moment uh, speaking about Jonah. It's written down for us, and it tells us in that that he was a servant of God and a prophet. This is not Jonah's first occurrence of being a worker for God, uh, of hearing a message from God and having to take it out and, and being faithful to God. But when it came to those of Nineveh, he refused to go to them. He refused to, to share with them God's message. He didn't want them to have any kind of hope. So he flees from the presence of God. And God is going to correct Jonah. If you turn to look at verse 17... Turn, turn and look at verse 17. So we've seen that Jonah has disobeyed God, and now we're going to see that he's again in that form of a time out. Jonah 1, 17, it says this. Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. The Lord had prepared a great fish for Jonah, and by so, the great fish swallowed Jonah, and he was in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights. Now, I don't know what kind of parenting skills you have. I don't know what kind of parent you are and how long you punish your children uh, for a timeout where they sit in a chair, that type of thing. But three days and three nights is certainly a long time. Certainly a long time to be in a timeout. Certainly should be enough time for you to really think about your actions. And again, you think about that uh, as you put your child in time out. Again, it's to, to have them separated from you, have them separated from friends, separated from all those fun and entertaining things that they can be involved in. And how much further could Jonah be away from people and other things than in the belly of a fish, swimming around? There he is in the darkness for three days and three nights. Jonah couldn't call anyone up. Jonah couldn't write anyone. Jonah was all by himself. All he could do is what we find in Jonah chapter 2 is pray to God. That's all Jonah had left. All he could do was pray to God. And we see in that prayer that he's thankful to God. Because God prepared such a great fish, Jonah doesn't have to drown in this sea. But yet he is saved. Yet he is thankful to God. 
And what we see then is Jonah is released from being separated. He's released from that time of thanking. Three days and three nights. Again, as you put a child in the time, as you give them time to think, the hope is that they will change. So, if you look then at Jonah chapter 3, verse 3. Jonah chapter 3, verse 3. We see that Jonah becomes faithful. We see that Jonah is going to be obedient unto God. Jonah chapter 3, verse 3, it says this. So Jonah arose and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. The Lord had to speak to him again, had to tell him to arise, to go to Nineveh, to take God's message. And we see here, verse 3, Jonah does that very thing. Now, wouldn't it be wonderful if I could tell you that the rest uh, of the page that you're reading off of is blank, if I could tell you that chapter 4 doesn't exist? If I could just end Jonah at chapter 3, verse 3, that Jonah was faithful and obedient for the rest of his days. But Jonah goes to Nineveh. He does that. But again, he doesn't have the heart that one ought to have. Yet Jonah, he goes and he preaches a message with no hope. He tells these people that in 40 days you will be overthrown. And that's the time frame he gave them. 40 days and you will be overthrown. No hope, no, no chance of praying to God, no hope for them to repent. That action is solely because of what they themselves chose to do. Because they had disobeyed God. Because they were unfaithful to him. And because of Jonah's message, they took it upon themselves to repent. And God spares Nineveh. It tells us in the book of Jonah that Nineveh was over 120,000 people. And God spared each and every one of them. Because they all had noticed what wrong they had committed. Understanding that they ought to have humbled themselves before God. And while Jonah being a servant of God, having received God's forgiveness having received God's mercy and grace in chapter 2, seeing that he was now free from the belly of the fish, not having to drown, Jonah should have had that same compassion, should have been grateful to know just how loving and compassionate God is. But if you turn to Jonah chapter 4, verse 1. Jonah chapter 4, verse 1. We see a very different Jonah than this obedient, this faithful Jonah, the one who goes to Nineveh, the one who takes them this message. Now we get to see the heart of Jonah. Jonah chapter 4 verse 1. We can see that he is illustrated no better than or is no acting no better than a child. Jonah 4 verse 1 it says this. But it displeased Jonah exceedingly and he became angry. The people of Nineveh repented. God being the creator, God being the one who has the authority to judge these people for their wrongdoing showed them compassion, saw their repentance, and rewarded them with forgiveness. There he did not hold them accountable of such things, did not take their lives from them, but gave them another day to see the sunrise, to go about their work, to spend time with family. And what that does for Jonah is what it says in verse 1, that it displeased him, and he became angry. Jonah felt that he deserved God's grace, that he deserved forgiveness, he deserved to have a second chance, but not these awful, wicked people. And so how sad that is. Three days and three nights was not enough time for Jonah to truly change. Again, perhaps at first it appeared to be that way, but yet it was not enough. Jonah's heart did not match his actions. He was obedient to God in actions, but not in his heart. We talked last week, if you remember, about words themselves are not enough. Words are not enough. And so we talked last week the importance of our actions, of the things we do, our works. But now we can even see through Jonah, there's an opportunity for us to just blindly go through the motions, to blindly go through actions without having the correct heart. So us, if we are going to truly change, then it is that we must change our actions and our heart. If we're going to be faithful, obedient, our actions and our heart must have God as our priority. Must be followers, must be obedient to God in our heart and through our actions. (coughs) 
So again, I share with you these three simple things. The, the process of what leads to a child to, in a timeout, the purpose of a timeout. And again, to think about our own situation here today. Think about this year. But typically what happens is that a child has disobeyed, has broken the parent's uh, law, has done something uh, that the parent did not want them to do, a behavior they did not desire, and so they are given time to think. And the hope is that that child would then change. Now I alluded to this verse earlier, but I think it's important for us to read it, for us to hear it. What I'm going to read and look at is Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12, 7 through 11. Understand that God is our Father. Understand that God is our Judge. Is the one that has authority over us. Hebrews 12, 7 through 11. It says this. If you endure chastening, God does with you as with sons. For what son is there whom a father does not chasten? But if you are without chastening, of which all have become partakers, then you are illegitimate and not sons. Furthermore, we have had human fathers who corrected us, and we paid them respect. Shall we not much more readily be in subjection to the Father of spirits and live? For they indeed for a few days chastened us, as seemed best to them. But he for our profit, that we may be partakers of his holiness. In verse 11, now no chastening seems to be joyful for at the present, but painful. Nevertheless, afterward it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. You remember that last verse, that chastening. While it is not joyful for the moment, yet it brings about righteousness, the peaceable fruit of righteousness. We've talked about in James, in James chapter 1, the importance of us looking at our trials and being joyful, knowing that it produces patience. To know that we can not just come to temptation and become discouraged, but we are able to overcome temptation. We're able to endure it and thus be able to rejoice. So when we look at these things, may we have that outlook. May we have that mindset to not become, again, discouraged, to be weighed down by such things. But maybe take the time we're given, where things are different, where things aren't normal, and really ask ourselves, how can we do things better? There are a lot of people, and perhaps you've heard it said, perhaps I've said it myself, that I can't wait till we get back to being here for Sunday evening, can't wait till we get back here Wednesday night. And again, I do hope you look forward to coming Sunday evening in person, where we can have song services. I hope that you're encouraged and want to come back to Wednesday night classes. But if that is our only hope, if that's our only thing that we're looking forward to, then perhaps we're not thinking far enough. We are the church, and we are the church not only when we meet in person, we are not the church only for a few hours out of the week, but we are the church daily. We are the church as long as we are faithful, as long as we are God's children. And so it is that we must live faithful, obedient lives not only on Sunday, but also Monday. We must take care of our brothers and sisters in Christ not only on Sunday, but on Monday as well. So may we use this time to really think about how we're doing things. May we really use this time to think going forward how it is that we can change for the better, that we can be more faithful, that we can be more concerned about our brothers and sisters in Christ, take care of one another better. May we not be discouraged by the chastening, but may we look forward to the righteousness that it produces. So again, I know that this year people have talked about many times has been challenging, but you and I as Christians have that hope. Mike was able to bring that hope and talk about it on the table today talking about Christ and what he's offered to us, eternal life, which is something separate from this temporary life, but something that is forever. That we get to be with our Creator. We get to be with our Heavenly Father. We get to be united with Him. We don't have to worry about sickness for eternity. We don't have to worry about becoming tired and becoming weak for eternity. And that's good news. So if you are that brother and sister in Christ, if you are that child of God, but you need prayers, you need encouragement so that you can be found victorious, so that God, you can hear God say, 
Well, well done, good and faithful servant. If that's you, if you need prayers, if you need encouragement, then we want to help you this morning. And if you're someone today who needs to become that child of God, needs to become that member of the church, to have your sins forgiven, be united with Christ, then what better time there is there than now? To be united with Him, to have your sins forgiven, that you'd repent of them, united with Christ in His baptism. If that's you, we ask that you come forward and stand seen the invitation song. Softly and tenderly Jesus is calling, calling for you and for me. Day on the portals he's waiting and watching, watching for you and for me. Come home, come home, ye who are weary, come home, earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling home. is pleading, pleading for you and for me. Why should we linger and heed not his mercies, mercies for you and for me? Come home, come home. from you and from me. Shadows are gathering, deathbeds are coming, coming for you and for me. Come home, come home, ye who Take this down so you can hear me. 
Uh, dear God, uh, we thank you for this time that we could uh, be here today, and uh, we thank you for this lesson that uh, Scott gave us, and we uh, ask you to be with those who couldn't be here today and uh, to be with us and protect us in these troubling times. And uh, in uh, your name we pray, uh, amen. 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 You may be seated for announcements. First of all, so I don't forget it, thank you, Bryce. Very good job. Uh, Jim Large has a new phone number. It is a cell phone number. If you've got something you want to put it on or in, I'll give you a second to get your uh, devices out here. And it's 740-438-1173. And I'll read that again, just a second here. 740 438 1173. Jim's got a cell phone. Wow! <laughs> I'd like to thank everybody for being here this morning. Um, one of the, Dave and I talked uh, briefly this morning. Dave and Chris aren't here. Dave has a procedure this morning, or in the, tomorrow morning, and is, um, has to quarantine because of that. And uh, he's hoping, he had, was tested for COVID, um, and he's hoping that he gets his test results back in time to have his procedure in the morning. Uh, so I, it, there's a chance he might get put off with that. We do have several in the congregation that have our home because of COVID at different levels of it. Uh, Janice and Al Chedister have got COVID and that's the reason they're not here or their immediate, their family. The Wolves have been exposed to COVID again. Um, my understanding is Christy Clevenger has been exposed also. The, and Lonnie and I are kind of um, going to stay away from everybody this morning. The Hills, uh, Andy and Sarah Hill were at our house for dinner Friday night and got a text from Sarah that she has some symptoms of COVID and not, uh, my understanding, we wouldn't, we discussed not coming this morning, but in my research from in times past, it takes two to 12 days to become contagious. So they were there Friday night. So we should be not uh, contagious until tonight, even if we did con contract it from them. But uh, keep these people in your family and, and their families in your, in your prayers. Uh, I did have a, last week had a cousin pass away, uh, Greg Kerr, mom's uh, nephew. Uh, from, from COVID-related issues, and ask you keep that prayer in your family. Again, that's Greg Kerr. Uh, keep them in your prayers. Uh, Dave and I discussed this morning whether maybe it, the, the right thing to do is to cancel services uh, for the next week or two. Uh, I think uh, I'd appreciate we feedback on that. Uh, well, that's, a, that's not a decision we take lightly, and uh, you know, I'd like to get... Uh, your feedback on it. The, it was pointed out, especially with the holidays and family getting better, getting together for the holidays, that the best decision may be to have not have services for at least one week and, and possibly then consider the second week. So give, give us your feedback on that um, and we'll, we'll make that decision. Uh, but we won't, we're requesting your input on that decision. Lonnie told me not to say this until they were here, but I can't keep good news down. Uh, the Hills that had dinner with us Friday night, we were discussing uh, about them placing their membership with us, and they have agreed that they want to place their membership with us. We'll announce this again when they're here. Uh, but we're excited about that. You know, even with all this COVID stuff going on, uh, there's good things happening here. And, and you know, it, it's... Uh, um, that, that's exciting. We're look, glad that they're glad to have them and please welcome them in, into the congregation, into our uh, little family here at um, North, uh, Somerset, wherever I am. <laughs> I, I counted heads here a little bit ago. There's 18 of us here this morning. So, 
but there were several on that. I was noticing also there are several on the stream. And uh, glad you guys on the stream. Thank you for participating in that, even though you can't be here. Um, does anybody have any other announcements that should be made at this time? There's nothing further. You're dismissed. <laughs>